In today's Bible reading from Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. May the Lord bless this reading in your hearts, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the title of our message is Spiritual Garments. As we read from Zechariah chapter 3, it tells of what happened in old time, that this vision was shown to the prophet Zechariah concerning the high priest in those days. Joshua was the high priest. And then he said, he saw Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And then the Lord now said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Because there's no other name greater than the Lord. The Lord himself rebuked Satan in the name of the Lord. That's why God gave us this wonderful name of Jesus, at which name every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he's Lord. And so he said, the Lord rebuke Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. In verse 3, he now said, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And then when he was talking of Satan, standing on the right hand of Joshua, said the problem was that he had filthy garments. He was putting on clothes, not physically, spiritually. In the natural, when you see him, he's dressed with the garment that Moses, God commanded Moses to make for Aaron in the wilderness. You know, that garment was for glory and beauty, well decorated. He said, Joshua is wearing that, but the Spirit of God, even the Spirit of the Holy Bible, is revealing to Zechariah, the prophet, that this man is putting on fitted garment. He is the high priest. You know what I mean? It's like a man who is in charge of a church today, like a general overseer. He said, but he had fitted garments on. Now, if the overseer had fitted garments on, then all his followers, all that congregation with fitted garments. That's the problem. So God now knew that the only way to solve the problem is to change the garments, the fitted garments of Joshua. If you do that, then all that are following Joshua all in that congregation of the Lord will now begin to change their garment. And so there's one man came to show us the truth. Jesus came so that there will be a change of garment. And how would that happen? He says that he told the angel in verse 4, he said, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him saying that we defeated garments from him and unto him he said behold i have caused thy iniquity to pass from you and i will clothe thee with a change of raiment you see we need a change of raiment change of garment not only certain people all people he says that he changed his raiment you know, that is what God is calling everyone to. He wants us to have a change of raiment. He wants us to change our raiment. You know, that's why the message of God is repentance, consistent. It does not change. Change means repent. That's why his message is repentance. John the Baptist came preaching repentance. Jesus 
preached repentance. His disciples preached repentance. Does not change. He said, Joshua, you need repentance. Everyone needs repentance. And then he said that the iniquity is taken away, the filthy garment taken away, change of garment. Hear what the Spirit spoke through prophet Isaiah. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses as as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Are you hearing? He said, when Joshua is putting on filthy garment, which was shown to prophet Zechariah by the Spirit, he said his righteousness he was putting on, filthy rags, righteousness of the flesh. Listen to the man of God, the prophet, he didn't say you, he said we all. As an unclean thing, all our righteousness is as filthy rags, dirty. It's not just only you. The prophet started with himself. That's why he says this thing took place in the year that King Uzziah died. The apostle, uh, the prophet Isaiah said, you know, his message changed. Change of garment. His spiritual garment, this not natural garment. He said, this garment is in the heart, in the mind. That Joshua was putting on filthy garments means that he was looking at the wrong thing in his heart. He says he was carnally minded. You know when we are carnally minded, that is filthy? Because he had just concluded all under sin. He said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not only certain people, everywhere. Now he said the starting point is that you start with yourself. You start with you. So the prophet started with himself. That's why he says, I am undone. I'm on, my lips unclean. I dwell among people of unclean lips. Now from that time on, his message changed because there's a change of garment, change of remit. He took away the old and gave the new. And so God is saying to us that if our doctrine is still flesh and blood, that is, I'm born again in the flesh, that's filthy garment. You cannot be born again in the flesh. You know, Joshua was the high priest, like one who is a pastor today. He said he needs repentance. Message of repentance doesn't change. It's consistent every time. Now he says that this Joshua, Satan was standing on his right hand. He said that he now became carnally minded. He forgot God. He forgot the truth. He forgot that there is only one righteous. There is no less. Now he said he enthroned maybe himself in his heart. Then his, now, his message is like, you know, the things I used to do, I do them no more. So some people he's listening, that is listening to his message want to be, come like Joshua. Then... He said the angel was standing by his side, and then he couldn't deal with him. You know, the angels are putting on this change of raiment. God gave them this garment in heaven. That's why when the angel comes, he is dazzling, he's white. He said this righteousness he's speaking of is the righteousness of the saint. Fine linen, clean and white. That even the angels are not clean before him. No man is clean before him, who before the righteous Christ. He said, we are, that's the message, we are. As an unclean thing, don't let them deceive you. You are not clean. You will never be clean. He said, God came to remove this filthy garment from us. Through what? Through his message. That's why we preach Christ. Listen to what the apostle wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 30 and 31. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom 
and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the lord are you hearing he said he that glory let your glory be in the written word of god he said there is no righteous but god has given us this right one he said the scripture is right you know the scripture is always right he told adam he said adam the day you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall surely die the serpent came to deceive him satan was now on his right hand and satan said to him no you will not die but he died when he ate from it he says that god has given us the holy scriptures to be right always eternally now he said this high priest left the holy bible he what is right to him maybe he had to wash leg wash hand and then when he dressed he said look or maybe his position and became right to him that because he's high priest he said i belong to god you know maybe his economy has changed he has he has money he's not begging he's not looking for food then that seems right to him that's not what the scripture says he says that god has given us the holy bible alone to be our righteousness our wisdom our righteousness our sanctification and redemption if they tell you you are sanctified through and through that is fake let the word of god sanctify you it says sanctify the lord god in your heart him alone let him be your dread let the word of god be your dread let him be your fear the fear of the word of god is the beginning of wisdom he said he changed his garment you know god is changing our garments in bible revelation ministry he's bringing the fine linen the wonderful garments which comes through preaching listening to what he says in ephesians chapter 4 in verse 22 and 20 to 24 that you put off consigning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws not certain people don't let them gather you into some hall and be preaching to you that you belong to god that's not how to belong to god he said put that off there's the old man say put him off where does it happen in verse 23 in the mind be renewed and be renewed in the spirit of your mind when the lord the spirit of god was showing to zechariah that joshua had filthy garment on the outside he looks the dressed but the inside is dirty naked you know that god wants us to be well dressed he said the way to be well dressed you must put off the filthy garment the old man not only what he does the doer he said remove him completely with all his ways is all his wickedness verse 24 and that and that ye put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness holy true and true he said he was tested he was tried he he was not found with sin sinless who jesus christ without sin and then God proved him by raising him from the dead. Wherefore, God won everyone. He said that he has ordained that one day he's going to judge the whole world in righteousness by this man, whom he had ordained by raising him from the dead. Is then that Joshua was a high priest, a great man of God, but he was putting on filthy garment, filthy message, filthy garment, filthy talk. We are in his heart. Now, he says they changed his garment and gave him this new man. When the new man enters you, his testimony will change. His talk will be inside you. You will not preach the word. And now that's what he's saying to us that our righteousness is Christ. That when Christ enters you, you are declared righteous. That this is the righteousness of faith. He speaks on this. Don't say who's going to bring Christ down from heaven or go to the grave and bring him up again. But this Bible is the Christ. If what is remaining, that you believe on him in your heart, then confess him with your mouth. 
That's all. He said, you shall be saved. If you deny him, he said he will deny you. Say, so see, that's what God brought us into. He wants us to have a change of garment. Dazzling. You know, he was speaking of John the Baptist. He says, Whom do you went? Who did you go to see in the wilderness? Was it a man well dressed? John the Baptist never had clothes on. He just had something to cover his, his waist, and the rest was empty, it was open. But he says that those, if you were looking for people well dressed, you go to the palace. But this man was a shining and a bright light. He said he was dazzling, yeah. that John was dazzling. Not in the outside, in the inside. You were willing to rejoice in his light for a season. Now God is saying to us, you need a change of raiment. That that change of raiment will make you to dazzle the devil. It will make you bright like an angel. Where does it take place? He says it's in the mind. In our heart. Change of garment. Remove the old man. Take to this new man. How do we do that? Through faith. Now that's why he said to us that because we are living in this world, you need to do it. Listen to what he said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness. Joshua did not know there is war. He didn't know that Satan was standing on his right hand to withstand him. He was not aware. He didn't know that the only weapon that can defeat him is Christ and Christ alone. The word of God. The full armor of God. That's why he's saying, verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. He said, Joshua could not stand. He was naked. Moses said to Aaron, why have you naked these people? They can't stand. You know when they can't carry Babylonian garment, they, they, people could not stand. You want to be able to stand against witches and wizards? You want to be able to stand against forces of darkness? You know this word is word of trouble. He said, put on the whole armor of God. This full arm that can destroy anything. It will, it will finish every evil. It's a garment. He says, if our earthly tabernacle of this temple we have is dissolved, this flesh we have, we have the beauty of God, eternal in the heavens. He said, put that beauty on. That is a clothing. That we are groaning to be clothed with our house from heaven. He said, that house is so powerful, it will swallow up mortality. It will swallow up death in victory. Now he says that Joshua was moving empty. It will be struck by the devil in an instant. He said we should not become religious empty people like the Pharisees, empty. He said put on this garment. Look at it in verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins guard about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Defense. You know what they said to, somebody said the other day, that St. Paul was looking at the Roman em em soldier to write Ephesians. But that's not true. If St. Paul was looking at the Roman em em soldier to write Ephesians chapter 6, then it would not be scriptures at all. Because none of these scriptures came privately. He said, Holy men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Every scripture was inspired by God. It's because he was watching God. That's why God inspired him. You see, God wants us to watch God as we study in the Sunday school. There's no other way to God than Jesus Christ, than his scriptures. He said, put him on. If you put him on, you reject every wickedness. He said, when you put him on, you'll be armed. When you are fully armed, you reject and revenge every disobedience. Amen. Now listen to what the scripture says, the truth. In Isaiah chapter 59, see what Apostle Paul was looking at. To write Ephesians. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head, 
and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. He said, Isaiah the prophet, when the spirit of the Bible came upon him, he was prophesying concerning Christ. He said, Christ put on this righteousness, the breastplate is righteousness, the, the word of God, by which he quenched every very dart of Satan. When the devil came to, came to tempt him, he said, the devil came to tempt Jesus. He silenced him. He said, what Jesus put on as a breastplate was the scriptures. And then he had the helmet of salvation. This is not Roman Empire. This is in the days of Isaiah the prophet. The Roman Empire didn't exist. Now, this is what St. Paul is looking at. That's why he said to Timothy, he said, study to show yourself and prove unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. Sharing the word of God in truth. You see, God is calling us that as he is armed, you see, God is armed. He said, you should also put on the same garment. He said, because Jesus put on this garment, he said, the garment is vengeance to revenge. Every disobedience that he was clad with zeal, that his garment will put zeal on you. That's why when Jesus was clad or was clothed with his garment, this spiritual garment, he went into the temple and overturned their table. And the disciples remember that it is written of him that the zeal of thine house has eaten him up. He said that the zeal of this garment eat you up. This is a garment that can eat up death. It will eat up sickness. You know, somebody is looking for something that you can put on and live eternally. He said this garment will give you eternal life. When you put it on, you cannot die. And the amazing thing about it, it tells us that this garment Revenge it is a garment of power. And when you put it on, it will revenge everything negative. So we don't fight spirit in naturally. We will be fighting spirit through the natural. You fight spirit by spirit. It's spiritual wickedness. The things that were troubling Joshua, he didn't see. But God saw you. He knew this problem was that he had filthy garments. Please, you know that God knows our problem. He said, the problem we have is that we are having filthy garments. That garment needs to be taken off. He said, when the garment is taken off, hear the good news in verse 19 of Isaiah 59. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. He said, when you put on this garment, when Satan comes, his power is finished. You are armed. So that's why I say, put on the whole armor of God, not partially, fully. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God, that you might be able. Those put him on, put on I'm on a God that you might be able to stand Satan. Hallelujah. Do you know that many people have been struck because they didn't put this armor on? Please put him on. So we are going to pray and say, oh Lord, I've seen that the garment is in the inside. It's not outside that as many as are baptized into Christ has put on Christ. It's a wonderful garment so that I'll be able to stand. Oh Father, make me to put on this wonderful spiritual garment. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Almighty oh, Savior, eternal spirit, the awesome, the glorious. May I not take evil to be righteousness to me. Christ is the righteous one. The Bible is right always.